Okay. Hi, everybody. A very, very good morning. I hope you're all doing great. And today is going to be the paper discussion. Let me share my screen. Okay. Just let me add the paper. Okay, so I think this is the paper. Right. Okay, fine. Next, uh, why do first question? Why do transition elements show discrepancy in their variation atomic radii? Now it's very simple. It is because of uh, f orbitals coming into the picture, right? F orbitals and d orbitals. It's all because d orbitals and f orbitals are coming into the picture, and uh, it's all about uh, we have different number of unpaired electrons. Different number of unpaired electrons you will have, and that's the reason why you are seeing so many discrepancies in the atomic radii. Okay, right. <clears throat> Next uh, question: The activation energy for the acid catalyst hydrolysis is this much, while the activation energy. For... Okay. What is this? Well, the activation energy is this much, while the hydrolysis when hydrolysis is catalyzed by enzyme sucrase. Okay, this is not in the syllabus, right? Activation energy, activation energy is not there in the syllabus, right, people? In your chemical kinetics? Yes, sir. Okay, but still, like in this, know this, whatever you have to understand here is that, so you see, uh, here the energy required is 6.22 kilojoules, but when I use an enzyme, when I use an enzyme, it is going to 2.15 kilojoules only, it is decreasing. So what happens here is that <coughs> this enzyme, sucrase, is nothing but a catalyst. Right. And obviously, we know catalyst is going to increase or decrease. I mean, they're going to increase the rate of the reaction, is it not? So, how do they increase the rate of the reaction? Is by decreasing the activation energy. That's what you need to write. If at all this was there in the syllabus, right? This is what you're written. Right. So, catalyst, they make sure that the reaction becomes faster by decreasing the activation energy. And in this case, the sucrase enzyme is actually going to act as a catalyst for this reaction to happen. Right. Okay. Very simple. Next. Uh, why chemical absorption? Why chemical absorption is referred to as activated absorption? Now we know since I like we have seen this in surface chemistry also. Like I taught you this, right? So whenever you have chemical absorption happening, right? So we know this kind of curve has to be followed. Hope you remember. Here I'll have reactants. Here I'll have products, right? So there'll always be this activation energy required. Is it not? There'll always be this activation energy required, and that's the reason. Since I am going to have some kind of chemical bond forming coming into the picture, and since I have some kind of chemical reaction coming into the picture between the adsorbate and the adsorbent, right? Obviously, we need to go for some. Activation energy. We need either this uh, this energy barrier has to be crossed, and that energy barrier is what is called as activation energy. And because I need to undergo this activation energy, and this is there, that is why it is going to be called as activated adsorption. Right? Chemical adsorption is always called as activated adsorption. Physical adsorption, there is nothing. There is no chemical reaction, so there is no activation energy. There is no nothing of this sort. Very simple. Okay. Right. Next. Uh, write the Nernst equation and calculate the EMF of this uh, following cell. Okay, you all have to write the Nernst equation and have to calculate the e, e cell of this. Very easy question, right? So all that we need to know is E cell is equal to E naught cell minus 0 0.059 by n into log of QC. Right, this is the equation. <clears throat> right. So first, let us calculate the E naught cell. E naught cell. How do you calculate E naught cell is equal to E naught of cathode minus E naught of anode. Right now, from the cell representation, you can easily understand that left hand side what you have is the anode, right hand side what you have is the cathode. Is it not? So first you have to take the Ag's value because it is cathode minus anode, right? So E naught cathode is 0.8 minus, and the anode value is 0.34, right? So you will be getting 0.46 volt. Sorry, minus I mean plus 0.46 volt as the E naught cell. That's okay. This is okay, right? Right. Now next we have to calculate the n value and the QC value separately. Separately for that we need to go. We need to go for the reactions first. Okay. Now at anode, what is happening at anode? We understand that copper is becoming copper two plus. Correct. Copper is becoming copper two plus. So copper 
will become copper two plus by accepting two electrons. Sorry, by uh, removing two electrons. Right? Fine. Now at cathode, what is happening? At cathode, we understand that uh, Ag plus is becoming Ag. That's what is happening. Right? So you have Ag plus accepting one electron to form Ag solid. Right? This is solid. This is also solid. Okay. Right. Now, when we have, when we write the overall reaction, I told you in overall reaction, no electron should be there. Right. So if I just add these two reactions here, I have one electron here, I have two electrons, so we cannot do that. So we have to multiply this reaction by two. Okay. So now what happens? Now I have two electrons here, two electrons here, two electrons, two electrons gets cancelled. And I ask you to remember it like this. The n value is what is the number of electrons you cancel. Here you cancel two, two electrons, right? So here n is equal to two. That is done. Right. Now, once you do this, now when you write the overall reaction, how do you write? You, so you have Cu um, reacting with 2 Ag plus, uh, giving uh, Cu 2 plus plus 2 Ag. Now we already know the n value, n value will substitute easily. Okay. Now, how do you write the Qc of this equation? Now I know this is a solid, uh, this is a solid. So this and this will not take into the picture of Qc, only this we will take, only the ions, that is the actual solutions. That's what we will take. So this is going to be concentration of Cu2 plus divided by concentration of Ag plus square. Do not forget this because I have a two, right? That, that has to go to the power, the stoichiometry coefficient, right? So concentration of Cu2 plus is given in the question. Is it not, it's here. Concentration of Cu2 plus is 0 0.13, right? So zero QC value will be 0 0.13 divided by, uh, your Ag plus concentration is 10 to the power minus 4. Ag plus concentration is 10 to the power minus 4. That's it. You got the QC. You got the N value. You not. You got the E not cell. Everything is there. All that you can do is put them here and find the answer. E not cell is known. 0 0.46. N value we know is 2. QC value I know is 0 0.13 in 10 to the power 4. Because 10 to the minus 4 is in the denominator. You go to the numerator. Got into the power minus four. All the values you know, we can have to substitute and get the answer down. Very simple. Okay. Fine. Next question. Write the chemical equation for all for all the steps involved in the rusting of iron. Give give any one method to prevent rusting of iron. Mm. Okay. Rusting of iron is very simple, right? So first, what has to happen is this uh, <clears throat> Fe, right? This uh, overall reaction if you check, right? So Fe will react with O2 to form Fe2O3 or you have to have moisture oil, moisture also, some amount of water also should be there. So you need to have, this is the formula for the rust. Okay, Fe reacts with oxygen and water in the, in the atmosphere to form rust. That is the formula for the rust, right? And you can go for, so many methods are there for, for, for this thing. You can go for galvanization, right? Or you can go for something called a sacrificial protection. Right, what do you mean by this? Actually, these, these both are almost similar only. Say, for example, this is your iron I have, right? So if I can have a zinc coating, so what is going to happen? Well, the zinc is the one which will react with O2 and the, the O2 and the H2O so that the iron is actually getting protected, right? So galvanization is the place where I have a coating of zinc on the surface of the iron so that the iron can be protected from the rusting. Sacrificial protection is also exactly like galvanization, but instead of zinc, you can go for any other element. It is not necessary. If it is specifically zinc, it is called um, a galvanization. If it is any other element, you're going to coat it, then it is going to be called a sacrificial protection. The same thing, because that will get sacrificed in order to protect your iron. Right? Anyways, that is how you answer this question. Okay, next. Fine. So for the reaction H2 plus Cl2 giving two HCl, the rate is equal to K, right? The rate is equal to K. Now, when I say rate is equal to K, what is the order of the reaction first people? Can you tell me? What is the order of the reaction? Zero. Go on. Zero, right? Obviously, because we generally write R is equal to K into concentration power, some X, some power, right? Only if this power is equal to zero, then only I'll have this equation, R is equal to K. 
right so you can easily understand that this is a zero order reaction but the okay the both ask both order and molecularity order is zero what is molecularity molecularity how do you calculate you calculate the total number of stoichiometric coefficient where one h2 one cl2 totally the molecularity is two okay what is molecularity it is the total number of stoichiometric coefficients of reactants only reactants so i have one h2 one cl2 so it is going to become two all right fine what is the unit of k now you can easily understand that in this case rate and the k are same unit so obviously you can easily say that it is going to be mole per liter per second that's it very simple right or i ask you to remember one trick if you can remember this formula mole power uh, 1 minus n liter power n minus 1 per second where n is the order of the reaction right so you put n is equal to 0 now n is equal to 0 now you will get what you will get mole per liter per second that's what you will get okay right so that is about that question next explain the for explain the following it's all about what is the now we are getting sol what is sol sol is basically when i have the dispersed phase dispersed phase to be your solid and dispersed medium to be liquid solid liquid dispersed medium dispersed phase right and foam what happens in foam the dispersed phase is a gas and dispersed medium is a solid okay and in missile missile formation you can easily understand what is missile formation the cleansing action of soaps if you remember hydrophobic part hydrophilic part i hope you remember just i think recently only we saw so whenever we have soaps right it will i will always represented like this it will always represented like this right this is your hydrophobic part right and this is your hydrophilic part right okay so whenever you put some dirt say i have a water right and then i have kept some cloth and which it has a dirt okay say so this is an oil dirt okay so this hydrophobic means it is going to fear water but it is going to love oil okay so all the uh, you know all the uh, soap particles will have something like this right the or the tail the hydrophobic tail will be towards oil and the hydrophilic part will be towards water this will be towards water right and this one the tail will be towards oil right and this by particular arrangement what you are seeing here is what is called as your missile formation right and obviously if you just you know agitate it the dot will be gone okay that's how the soaps work right very simple fine okay next uh, a compound having molecular a compound hex having molecular formula c3h7no reacts with br2 in the presence of koh br2 in the presence of koh to form another compound y okay. the y reacts with h2o to form oh okay hey sorry ah fine so we have acetone to acetic acid what you have to do write the reactions for obtaining acetone from acetic acid basically what you have to do is i have acetic acid right you have to convert it into acetone this is what acetone right yeah This is what has to do. Okay, I have to get. I have to convert this into uh, what is that? Uh, acetone, acetic acid to acetone. Okay, let us check how, what we what we can do about this. So we have CH three COOH, and we need to convert it into acetone. Okay, so what I first the first thing what I observe is that there are three carbon atoms here. There are only two carbon atoms here. so somehow we have to go for increase in the number of carbon atoms <clears throat> right uh what i can think of is say fine so if i can reduce it right say if i can go for any reduction uh say if i go for dibal h right now if i put dibal h this will convert into ch3 cho okay now i can can write the proper uh this thing Okay, CH three CHO is what I have. Then maybe I'll go. I actually require one more carbon atom extra, right? And the only way you can think about increasing the number of carbon atom is by going for uh, Grignard reagent, right? So you can take CH three 
mg br right if you do that we know how it works also we have the negative charge here this attacks here this attacks here and then we have to go for hydrolysis also so we will form ch3 coh and then there's a h this h i'm writing it like this ch and then this ch3 would have been attached with this cupola carbon atom and this is what we have done and then you have to convert this into this and you have to yes kanna question for this yeah. question i uh, what i did is i uh, the alcohol i converted mm -hmm. it to an acid chloride by reacting it with socl2 okay and then uh, 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 then acid chloride i uh, reacted i added dialkyl cadmium good one I mean, good CH3 one that's three two understood, cadmium understood. that also will work yes yes it's correct it's correct what you're doing is absolutely right okay yeah so that is that also that so whatever she is trying to say that another also i'll tell you now that is also another way of doing it okay fine so here first what we do is we take dibal h uh, reduce it to aldehyde and then go for grignard reagent and this has can be easily converted into this this is just secondary alcohol going to this so you can go for any oxidation say you can go for kmno4 or k2cr207 that's done right so what uh, she was telling is like uh, that is also a good method so when i go for this if i put socl2 right when i put socl2 i know this is converted into cocl right now now it's not necessary that you have to go for uh, dialkyl cadmium that is say ch3 twice cd you can use that or you can use a grignard reagent directly here ch3 mgbr either of this basically from this ch3 minus will come from this ch3 minus will come that will attack here that will attack here and then say the cl minus leaves as a plus that and then you can easily convert this into ch that is also okay this is also a good method this is also okay right see for a, for conversions and all you can always bring in your creativity you can always bring in different different types right but again it should be correct like right? you see just because i told you to come up with the creativity don't don't make up reagents don't make up reactions by yourself whatever you know whatever is there in the textbook whatever reactions are already existing you can play with that however you want okay fine good one good one so that is about this next what i need to do i need to convert or i have to get uh, for from toluene i have to get benzene okay right what i need to do is i have uh, ch3 i want to convert this into benzene okay now okay we can do this right so when i go for kmno4 this is your side chain oxidation right kmno4 in the presence of heating obviously h plus everything should be there we know that this entire thing will get converted into coh done then what you can do then go for decarboxylation okay people for decarbo obviously what what happens in decarboxylation that co2 will be gone and then all that you will have is h here okay now tell me how what is the reagent required for decarboxylation can can you tell me sodium sodium carbonate sodium carbonate no naoh sir ah naoh plus cao this is what it will take soda lime process right for decarboxylation you need to take this NaOH plus CaO. That's a direct two steps, right? Anybody has any other any other any other uh, method they follow? You want to share with me, or you want to share with the class? <clears throat> nobody, nobody attended this. Nobody got any answers. Sir, okay, I, I, this, yeah. I didn't. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I definitely did, I got this question wrong. But there was okay. uh, so I I remembered some reaction where uh, the end result was benzene and you would use zinc for it. That I is phenol. No, to... that is this one. That is this one. When I have phenol, right, and then I go for zinc dust, right, you will get benzene. That you can do. Okay, sorry, sir. I wasn't able to recall that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I can't hear you, yeah. sir. Yes. Ah, no issues. No issues. See, there is another method, but little. Uh, uh, see, it's the you will not be able to convert. Huh? Yeah, I think this is the best method you can have. Whatever I wrote here, right? This is the best method you can have. Okay. Fine.
fine uh, but i can i think of another method if uh, ch3 if i can convert it into uh no i don't want to waste time obviously i can come with methods but again why to waste time we can't answer right okay next question where are you okay uh, this one a compound x having molecular formula c3 h7 no reacts with br2 in the presence of koh okay to give compound y right and this compound y reacts with hno2 to form ethanol and n2 gas okay this is very simple people so you can easily understand that this is this reaction is from amine because i'm using hno2 um, and okay now look at this like this particular information is good enough for us to understand what is compound y okay why because you understand that say if i have r nh2 that that is your aliphatic amines aliphatic amines if you have and if you make it react with hno2 right now they will form your diazonium salt right but this diazonium salt is not there in the syllabus but still like this formation you need to know aliphatic amines how they react you should know this okay right so r nh2 is there if you put hno2 you will get the diazonium salt this n2 plus and cl minus but this is very very unstable right this is very very unstable so what is going to happen is it will not be there eventually this will convert into alcohol by removing your n2 gas okay now they are telling this alcohol which is getting formed is ch3 ch2 oh they're telling ethanol is getting formed right so can i check what would have been the amine the amine would have definitely been this ch3 ch2 nh2 right so if i can just draw the map for you so i have a compound x right and that reacts with br2 in the presence of koh to form y and this reacts with the uh, hno2 to form uh, ch3 ch2 oh and now we can easily easily found out that this was ch3 ch2 nh2 done now you see i am putting br2 in the presence of koh from some compound and this compound is c3h7no okay right so i am putting that has some compound x and i am putting br2 in the presence of koh i am getting an amine and see very carefully here i have three carbon atoms here i have only two carbon atoms what is this reaction i have something okay you are eating exactly yes this is hoffman bromide reaction right only in hoffman bromide reaction in the in the compound the amine formed will have one carbon atom less compared to your uh, uh, reactant and the reactant obviously should have been an amide right so now i can easily guess what would have been your uh, amide this only would have been an amide right ch3 ch2 c double bond o nh2 so this c double bond o would have been gone and the rest thing will come out last stuff as such if we put br to the presence of koh please remember people this is your hoffman bromide reaction or it is also called as hoffman degradation reaction okay right good question good question okay moving on Okay, linkage isomerism not there in the syllabus. Don't worry about it. Coordination isomerism not there in the syllabus. Okay, why this question you can answer? Why is uh, NiCl four two minus paramagnetic? Now we have to go for VBD. Show it, right? Fine, we can show this. Sir, but it's given as only two, sir. We are saying. Yeah, it's a printing mistake that you you need to know this, right? So even if it's two plus, it will be the same answer, right, sir? No, it will be different. If it is because the oxidation state of Ni will change, right? See, so for example, plus six. Ah, correct. Right. So if I have Ni Cl four two minus, I don't know who prepared this question. Last two tests, uh, I I at least checked the question papers so that there were no mistakes. At least there were no questions from. the syllabus is not there for you but i don't know who checked this question paper okay anyways no issues so we have nacl for 2 minus and say if you if you if you were confusing it to be nacl for 2 plus like you can easily understand x minus 4 will become plus 2 x will be plus 6 oxidation state that is not possible for nickel 
right? So only if it is two minus, then you can easily understand that x minus four is equal to minus two. So x will be in plus two oxidation state. So here I have nickel to be in two plus oxidation state. Okay. So nickel alone, I think, will have three D eight four S two. Is it right? Uh, scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel. Yeah, three D eight. Right. So three D eight, and then if it is Ni two plus, right? If it is Ni two plus, uh, all I have is three D eight four S zero four P zero, and four D zero also. We can have it, right? So now we can just mark the things. So. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now I have four. This is your three D. This is your four S. This is your four P. And if at all, four D also is there. <clears throat> okay. Now see what what ligand we have. We have Cl minus as a ligand, which is a weak ligand, weak field ligand. So whenever we have a weak field ligand, no pairing. So these two electrons will be like this only. Okay. So the only way you will be able to go for making four coordinate bonds, if you have that, is possible when you have four empty hybrid orbitals. So obviously here, four you have to combine, and all of these individually are sp3 hybridized orbitals. And you can easily understand that there are two unpaired electrons making it paramagnetic. Whenever we have unpaired electrons. Those kind of species will be called as paramagnetic species. So no unpaired electrons, all are paired. Then it is a magnetic. Right? Easy question again. Okay. Then, then, then. Okay. What complete the synthesis by giving starting material range in the products? Okay. So fine. You have to have only one question. Okay. Fine. So. Is this okay? So you have uh, this CHO and you have this particular aldehyde, okay? And they're going for dilute NaOH. Now, people, this you can easily see is okay. First, when I put NaOH, there are two possibilities, right? When I have aldehydes and ketones, right? Uh, and I go for NaOH, there are two kinds of reactions which can happen. What are the two kinds of reaction? Yeah, yeah. Please go on. Aldol and cancel. No, aldol and cancel. Right, obviously. We, now, how will you choose whether I, whether aldol will happen or canizero will happen? Uh, canizero contains concentrated base. Okay, fine. If the question does not give you concentrated or uh, concentrated or like dilute, if they don't just they give you, they just give you any OH, then how will you decide? In this case, okay, they are giving you dilute, so you can guess that it is going to be. Uh, maybe aldol, but say uh, in uh, some form, the question just says NaOH, and it doesn't say about whether it's dilute or concentrated. Then how do we find out whether it's aldol or canizero? Can you maybe it's concentrated by default. No, 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 not like that. What is the condition for an aldehyde or ketone to undergo aldol condensation? Or what is the condition for an aldehyde or a ketone to undergo presence. cancer or reaction? Presence what of a dilute it? alkali. Presence of dilute alkali is a mm. must. Mm. And the presence of alpha that's hydrogen. That's what, that's what, no. Like, uh, that is what I'm looking for. Yes, it's all about having alpha hydrogen people. For aldol condensation to happen, we need to have at least one alpha hydrogen present in the aldehyde or ketone. Only then it can undergo aldol condensation. If there is no alpha hydrogen, say for example, benzaldehyde, if you have HCHO, you have all these things will undergo only canizero reaction, right? So it is, you have to look for what? You have to look for alpha hydrogen presence. If alpha hydrogen is there, then it is uh, aldol condensation. If no alpha hydrogen is there, then you have to go for canizero. Obviously, dilute or concentrated, obviously, but still if in the question if that is not given, then what will you do? This is all, this is the main thing. Dilute and concentrated is only the next thing. The next not, not that important. But having alpha hydrogen or not, that decides meaning. Okay, fine. Now in this case, uh, let me maybe draw it somewhere here. Okay, so we have benzaldehyde, right? And then we have CH3, CH2, CHO. This is what we have, right? Yeah, CH3, CH2, CHO. 
Okay, right. Now, what do you understand is this has alpha hydrogens and this has no alpha hydrogen. Ooh, okay, now complicated, right? So I told you that, you know, alpha hydrogen, if it is there, it is uh, uh, alpha hydrogen, if it is not there, a can is zero. Now, if the one of the compound is alpha, or having alpha, another other compound is uh, not having an alpha hydrogen, right? Now, even in these kind of cases, if I'm giving you two compounds, right? And even if there are uh, one compound is having alpha hydrogen, another one is not having alpha hydrogen, still it is aldol condensation only. Right? The moment you see any one of them having alpha hydrogen, you can decide that definitely it is going to be aldol condensation. Okay. Now you can easily understand that this particular reaction is actually a cross aldol reaction, right? Because in general in aldol condensation, we use two moles of the same aldehyde or the same ketone. Right? But if I use one, one mole of the same aldehyde or ketone, definitely that is going to be called as a cross aldol reaction. Right? Okay. Now, people, we know that the mechanism here is very, very, very important. If you don't know the mechanism of aldol condensation, I am so sorry, you will not be able to answer this question. Okay? Right? So now, you can easily understand that this, sorry, this particular thing has alpha hydrogen. So this alpha hydrogen is acidic. And that's the reason, that's the main reason why the aldol condensation reaction happens. Right. So obviously this particular carbon does not have any hydrogen, so it will not be able to come out. Right. Okay. Let us see what is going to happen here. So we have CH3, CH2, CHO. Now when I put dilute NaOH here, I know this dilute NaOH is going to abstract a H plus. Right. It is going to abstract a H plus and where the H plus will come from, obviously from the alpha position. Right. So one of the H plus will be gone. So if, we, if I remove H plus from this, obviously I'll have a negative charge on this carbon. Okay. Now what is going to happen? Now you have your benzaldehyde, right? We have our benzaldehyde like this. Okay. Now this negative charge can go and attack the carbonyl carbon of the benzaldehyde and this bond can break. Right. Okay. So next what is going to happen? Let us draw the benzaldehyde. So we have this CH O minus because this would have become O minus and this particular carbon and this particular carbon is now attached to each other, right? So let us mark it. So we have the CH, right? This CH is attached to this particular carbon and that CH is having a CH3. This CH3 is what I'm talking about. And that CH is also having a CHO. This is what we have, right? Again, I'll repeat if you're a little bit confused. So first step is that you have to remove the H plus from the alpha position. You remove the H plus, make the negative charge, right? And this negative charged carbon is going to attack the next carbonyl group. That is the next carbonyl carbon of the benzaldehyde. So it will attack here and this bond breaks, right? All that I did is to make the bond properly. The bond should be made between this carbon and this carbon. That is this carbon and this carbon. And whatever other things are there, these two carbons should be there. Just because you are making a new bond doesn't mean the other bonds are breaking, right? So now you, the, this bond is broken, O minus is there. And to this CH, to this CH, we have one CH3 and one CHO. Now, that is how you can do structures. Okay. Now, if at all, uh, you can even uh, go for one more step and write this, but I'm here only, I'm going to write this O, o minus will become OH. Very, very simple. Okay. Right. Now, what is the next step? I have to remove water molecule. How do you remove water molecule? OH from this, H from here. OH, H. You will remove to form, if I can write this properly, CH double bond C, CH3, CHO. Because you OH you remove from this, H you remove from this, double bond will come between these two carbons. So between these two carbons, double bond, and other thing stays as such. CH3 is there. CHO is there. That's it. This is the final answer. C benzene ring, CH double bond C, and that is having a CH3 and a CHO. Now, remember this, we'll always get alpha, beta, unsaturated, unsaturated um, aldehyde or ketone as the product in case of aldol condensation. Now, look at this. This is your normal CHO. This is your alpha. This is your beta. Between your alpha and beta carbons, there will be unsaturation. That is your double bond will be there. That is how you must remember the product. And that kind of product only should be found. Okay. Right. I hope everybody was following. Right. That's a good question again. Next. Okay. That is done. Okay. Then again, so much, so much. Whatever is this. 
Dune, I don't think I need to go to go through any of this. I don't need to. Okay, fine. The unit of uh, rate of a reaction involves gaseous species. Okay, I think after we have to go through this. Fine. So rate of velocity, the rate or velocity of a chemical reaction can be defined as the rate of appearance or rate of the okay, rate of disappearance of one or more of reactants in your time. Okay. Uh, when chemical reaction occurs, the concentration of reactants decrease. Okay. When well, the concentration of products increase. Okay. Uh, the rate of reaction can be measured as okay rate of reactant A and the rate of formation to compose. Okay. The rate at which the reactant is being consumed is what is called as instantaneous rate. Factors affecting the rate of the reaction temperature. Right. So the unit of unit of rate of a reaction. Oh, they are asking unit only. Okay. Oh, okay. We're not. We, they, they don't have anything to do with order. Okay. Now look at these people. Right. So they're asking unit of rate, not the rate constant. Either it was rate or rate constant. Okay. They're asking you what is the unit of rate involving gaseous species. Now, if you look in, for example, see if all of them are gases. If the reactants involved are gases, generally what we write, we write rate as change in Concentration divided by change in time. That is how we generally represent it. But concentration I can have when I have aqua solutions. Right. But if I have gases, what is going to happen? Obviously, there is no, there is, there is not a stupidity to speak uh, concentration of nitrogen gas or concentration of hydrogen gas. That doesn't make sense. Right. What will make sense is, can you complete it? What will make sense? Instead of concentration, what should I use? For gases? Pressure. Exactly. Right. So this is for aqua solution, this thing. The rate for gases would be change in pressure divided by change in time. Right. So pressure you can take in ATM, for example, ATM and time you will be taking in seconds. So ATM per second is what is the answer to this question. You should write ATM per second. Okay. All right. Next. How is the rate of the reaction represented uh, for this particular reaction? So basically, they're asking you in terms of rate of disappearances, rate of formations, right? We can do this right very easily. So first we'll take about A. So we have minus uh, first we'll write rate of overall reaction. Let me write it here. Okay. So rate of the overall reaction is equal to minus 1 by 2 dA by dt is equal to minus 1 by 3 into dB by dt is equal to plus 1 by 4 into dC by dt, right? So this dA by dt, dB by dt, dC by dt, all these are rate of disappearance of A, rate of disappearance of B, and rate of appearance of C. Right, all these individual terms. But if you multiply by the uh, inverse of the stoichiometric coefficient, then that becomes equal to the rate of overall reaction. That is how you represent it. Okay, right. good. Next, how does the surface area of the reactant affect the rate of the reaction? Yes, it does. Now, see, people, you don't uh, like again. This is no, no. I would say this strictly speaking is not from your syllabus, but still. So what you understand is people, right? Say I have uh, one black reactant and say I have uh, one yellow reactant. Okay, this is one reactant. Uh, this is another reactant. Okay. So what? What? Uh, how do you think a chemical reaction happens? A chemical reaction happens through collision, right? They they both will collide. Okay. Now when they collide, uh, they will form something like this. Okay, and eventually. Something else will happen, and then say they'll eventually go for product formation. This is your product. Okay, right? So you have two reactor molecules, and these two reactor molecules will collide, and during their collision, some change will happen, right? And that change will eventually lead to the formation of product. That is what you need to understand. Okay, now because I'm talking about collisions here, right? Because I'm talking about collision here, if the surface area is let's like, say if this has a very big surface area, if there's a very big surface area, the when they collide, the area of contact, how much contact they have between the gaseous molecules, not necessarily gaseous molecules, between the reactant molecules, right? If the reactant molecules are pretty big and then they have a large surface area, 
when they come and collide they will have large area of contact rather than coming like this and making and hitting if they come like this and hit they will have more area of contact isn't it so when they have more area of contact better collision will happen and the rate of the reaction becomes faster okay so all that we need to understand is surface area and surface area of the reactant obviously and your rate are directly proportional okay so if the surface area increases the rate if the surface area of the reactant increases the rate of the reaction also increases okay it is all because better and more effective collisions will happen if i have higher surface area for the reactant and better product formation faster rate everything will happen good good next <clears throat> and the formation of sulfur trioxide in the contact process okay this, this is the reaction uh, the rate of the reaction was measured the rate, they have given you the okay rate of the reaction in terms of oxygen right that means what now can you tell me exactly what is this given to you this value how will you define this value 3 into 10 to the power minus 4 mole per liter per second how will you exactly define this value can you tell me minus del of o2 by del t no 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 i'm asking you to define it in words in words when i say this is the rate with rate respect of to oxygen correct correct good it is that it, when i say rate with respect to oxygen obviously in this case oxygen is a reactant right so we will say rate of disappearance of oxygen and that value is what is given to be like this okay good fine now what they are asking what is the rate of the reaction expressed in terms of sulfur trioxide now obviously they are asking you what is the rate of formation of so3 that is what they are trying to ask right so for this let us write the uh, this thing again so you have so2 plus o2 giving so3 and i think we need to balance it isn't it oh, already balanced okay 2 and 2 okay right now how do you represent it people rate of overall reaction is equal to minus 1 by 2 into d of so2 divided by d is equal to minus 1 by 1 into d of o2 divided by dt is equal to plus 1 by 2 into d of so3 divided by dt right this is how we represent the connect all the different different things okay now what is given in the question forget about the signs okay minus sign plus sign don't worry about it okay fine so now uh, this particular value the rate of disappearance of o2 that is what is given in the question 3 into 10 to the power minus 4 what they are asking they are asking you this particular value rate of appearance of so3 right so if i can just connect these two can i write it like this uh, d of so3 uh, divided by dt is equal to 2 into 3 into 10 to the power minus 4 because i'm connecting this and this right if i just take these two alone right so you have uh, d this value is what i think if you find out so if i just bring this to this side so this is what you get so the rate of appearance of so3 is 600 to the power minus 4 mole per liter per second that's it very easy okay right and you can find all other things also you can find this value you can find the rate of overall reaction everything can be found out easily from this data okay right next uh, this question or they have given okay let us take the or question also in the rate equation right the concentration of reactants is unity okay in the rate equation the concentrations of reactants are unity then the rate is equal to okay when i take what do you mean by the concentrations of reactants are unity <clears throat> we are talking about change in concentration right so the answer will be rate constant right sir okay hmm oh okay when they go oh, rate equation they are not talking about this equation there right they are talking about the rate law equation that is rate is equal to k into concentration of so2 power x into o2 power y that is what they talking about they telling that when the concentrations are same one and one when the concentration is one and one anything power uh, in one power anything is one again one power anything is one so you can directly tell that the rate will be equal to the rate constant 
that's it yeah that way you can see but again i would not attempt this attempt this question if i were if i were you because this is little uh, i don't know what they're expecting here okay anyways right all other questions are very easy you need to attempt it okay fine anybody want anybody has any doubt any question has to be repeated please tell me if you have any doubts anywhere i can i can repeat it again for you any questions anybody wants sir uh, no, the second question sir do we have it in okay. syllabus no you don't have it in syllabus don't worry about it but even if they ask you all that you need to understand is if i have catalyst so we know that this activation energy is there right right so when i use catalyst this activation energy will be reduced and the reaction will go like this so what you are seeing the activation energy is reduced here if i use a catalyst right and that is what is explained here also right so when we use okay. a catalyst uh, 6.22 is becoming 2.15 because this uh, particular uh, sucrase is an enzyme which is going to act as a catalyst by decreasing the activation energy and the reaction becomes faster that's what is happening and but this is not ideally speaking this should, this is not there in the syllabus okay. yeah any other questions okay fine if there are no questions uh, i think you will write one more full test i guess right so we will be meeting i think one more time next week again we meet do you have one more test guys yes do you have one more test yes sir yes sir yeah oh you have one more test okay so that this this is not the last time we will be seeing so i'll give you my all the best all the speech in the next class then right so till then thank you so much people we'll again meet very soon thank you so much i'm ending the class thank you sir thank you, thank you.